Here's a question sent by Ian, who's in Canada. He asks, how can I even hope to gain enlightenment when I see people like you and your guru, Swami Dayananda, who have spent so many years completely devoted to Vedanta before becoming enlightened? I've been studying Vedanta for close to a decade now, but I haven't attained moksha, liberation. Although I do get glimpses of my true limitless nature from time to time. How long does it take? To get a college degree, it usually takes four years. To become a fully qualified medical doctor, it might take 12 years. But we can estimate time spans like these only when there's a fixed syllabus or a specific sequence of required lessons. As you might expect, the process of gaining enlightenment is utterly different. Instead of a fixed sequence of lessons, the process is actually nonlinear. Yet Vedanta's nonlinear process does pass through several stages, and we'll discuss those stages here. First, we have to understand properly what enlightenment really is. According to the rishis, the sages of ancient India, enlightenment is the discovery of your true inner nature, atma, which is pure consciousness, unborn, eternal, limitless, perfect, and divine. But your true limitless nature is covered by a so-called veil of ignorance that prevents you from recognizing your own essential divinity and transcending all worldly suffering. So enlightenment is the recognition or realization of your own true nature by removing the veil of ignorance that covers Atma. That ignorance is removed by knowledge, a special kind of knowledge, knowledge of Atma, self-knowledge. So, how long does it take? Ironically, the veil of ignorance covering Atma is removed instantaneously as soon as self-knowledge arises. So, in a manner of speaking, enlightenment doesn't take any time at all. But, to gain that special self-knowledge, you have to be ready for it. You have to be adequately prepared. And all that preparation takes time. Let me explain. In high school, before you could learn trigonometry, you had to study algebra and geometry first. In the same way, before you can gain self-knowledge, you have to undergo several crucial steps of preparation first. Just as college handbooks list prerequisites for each course, traditional texts on Advaita Vedanta list certain prerequisites that are indispensable for gaining self-knowledge. Not surprisingly, these prerequisites are extensive. They include being able to discern what is real, and cultivating complete dispassion towards worldly pleasures, as well as developing deep inner silence, unwavering self-control, one-pointed concentration, and firm conviction in the truth of Vedantic teachings. These extraordinary qualities are not easily acquired. And only when they've been fully developed are you able to gain self-knowledge. But there's a further problem here. These qualities are so extraordinary 
that they can be gained in full measure only by someone who's already enlightened. So, you can't get enlightened unless you're fully prepared, and you won't be fully prepared until you're enlightened. It's a catch-22 situation, as a common idiom says. Fortunately, this paradoxical problem does have a solution, a solution that's found in Vedanta's unique, non-linear approach to spiritual growth. Instead of first becoming fully prepared and then seeking self-knowledge, it's possible to work towards gaining preparation and self-knowledge at the same time, pursuing them both in parallel. Each pursuit supports the other until you become fully prepared and simultaneously gain self-knowledge. There's an excellent metaphor that describes this nonlinear process. Suppose you want to start a fire with some twigs, but the twigs are soaking wet. The wetness of the twigs represents your lack of preparation. Only when the twigs are dry will they burn. And only when you're fully prepared can you gain self-knowledge. Suppose you strike a match and try to ignite the wet twigs. They won't catch fire, but the heat generated by the match helps dry them out a bit. In the same way, when you first study the teachings of Vedanta, self-knowledge won't arise because of your lack of preparation. But studying those teachings will help you become a bit more prepared. After striking dozens or even hundreds of matches, the twigs will eventually dry out and finally burst into flames. In the same way, studying the teachings of Vedanta for a sufficient period of time will eventually help you become fully prepared and then the fire of self-knowledge will ignite burning away the veil of ignorance and revealing your true divine nature. Returning to Ian's question, just as the length of time needed to ignite a pile of wet twigs depends on how wet they were to start with, in the same way, the time you need to become enlightened depends on the degree to which you lack the qualities needed for preparation. In my case, many years were required because I sorely lacked many of the necessary qualities. In particular, I lacked emotional maturity, which is a crucial requirement. I was like a freshman in college who had to take a lot of remedial courses. But there's another aspect of Vedanta's nonlinear path to enlightenment that's not often discussed or understood. When you become fully prepared and self-knowledge finally arises, the veil of ignorance covering Atma is instantly removed, enabling you to realize your true nature. But that self-knowledge arises in a mind subject to human limitations and imperfections. In particular, your mind is deeply conditioned by countless experiences you've had from childhood onwards. Those experiences have built up and reinforced a false self-concept a false sense of identity based on identification with your body, mind, and your roles in daily life. Factors like your age, gender, and profession have molded your self-concept and have come to define you. When self-knowledge first arises in your mind, all that conditioning won't just vanish your false self-concept won't immediately be transformed because it's so deeply embedded in your thinking. 
As a result, when you first gain self-knowledge, instead of attaining moksha, liberation, you'll merely get a glimpse of your true divine nature, as Ian observed in his question. Ian's experience of merely getting glimpses of truth sounds familiar to me. In the early 1980s, my formal study of Advaita Vedanta began in weekly classes taught by a senior disciple of Swami Dayananda. Those classes were amazing, and I left each class feeling elated from the wonderful insights I was led to discover. After class, it took me about 20 minutes to drive back home. And by the time I arrived, all those marvelous insights seemed to have faded away completely. Later, I came to understand that a period of assimilation was required for those glimpses of my true divine nature to grow strong and develop into abiding, unshakable knowledge. For 30 years, I had been enveloped by a veil of ignorance, and that ignorance permeated every aspect of my thinking. A mere glimpse of my true nature couldn't possibly wipe out all that conditioning. Patterns of thinking formed in my childhood and maintained for decades patterns that were all based on ignorance, needed time to be transformed with the help of Vedantic teachings. So, here's the big picture. After spending many years studying Vedanta and simultaneously gaining the necessary preparation, self-knowledge finally arises. But then, even more time is required to fully assimilate that knowledge. A traditional metaphor compares this process of assimilation to making rasagula, an Indian sweet, in which little balls of cottage cheese must be soaked in a sugary syrup overnight before they're ready to eat. Just like rasagula must be immersed in syrup for a sufficient length of time, in the same way, you have to remain immersed in the teachings of Vedanta long enough for those teachings to completely permeate and transform your thinking. Of course, this process of assimilation begs the same question. How long will it take? A cookbook will tell you how long to keep rasagula immersed in syrup, but there's no similar guide for the process of assimilation because it's different for each person. Fortunately, at that stage in your spiritual growth, you've already discovered your true nature, even if your mind doesn't continually abide in that truth. So, Whenever your mind gets distracted and drawn away into a state of suffering, you can easily bring your mind back and lead it to abide in your true divine nature. This is the 13th video in a series that answers questions submitted by viewers. If you have a question that would serve as a good topic for a video like this one, please email me at this address and be sure to indicate video question as a subject of the email. I'll try to address your question in a future video.